Here's a couple of stereotypes I'm going to throw back in your face. Oh, all Americans are really loud. Let me tell you something about Abercrombie at 3 o'clock in the morning. Taco fries, please! The documentary was I was going down to Waterford. I can only bring what fits in this bag to work on the minimum wage, 6.35. You know, it's funny, I was, I was in bed last night and I really started to think, I really started to think about the money. I'm not bringing my mobile, I'm not bringing my credit card, I'm not bringing my bank card. It's just to survive for the first week, but I have to pay my rent out of this. No real final thoughts. Did I turn off the immersion? You know, some people think, oh yeah, sure, go down to Abracababra, but it's not like I was in Abracababra and then going home every night and sniffing loads of cocaine and thinking, yeah, I can get through this, it's only one month. <laughs> cocaine, anyway, is not very minimum wage, it has to be said. <laughs> We're in. Somebody's home. I was hoping nobody would be home. Hello? How you doing, man? I'm Des. Hi, oh, you're all right, man. John, nice Good to meet you. you. 70 euro you. on my rent. What's the story, as they say? Living with students in a crappy student flat. Which bedroom is mine? Oh, um, that one in there. This one here? Yeah. Cool. Thanks a million. Students from the WIT, ladies and gentlemen, not even real students. <laughs> Speaking of my own room, and I got a sink. Come on, this is luxury. Hello. Hello. Hi, I'm Hi, Des. How are you? I'm Anne. Welcome Anne, to nice to meet you. Des, how are you doing? Walter, nice to meet you. Natalia. Natalia. Natalia, Natalia pleasure. You get paid every Thursday. Do you do a back week? Yes. Bonuses, you get your food. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah, you get, what's the story with the food? Yeah, you get, um, you get your break there, you get um, food, whatever your food of your choice there. Oh, really? Yeah. You can get dressed here. Thanks a million. I'll see you in a minute. The whole world in your hands, Abercrombie. Oh, it's just an apron. You don't have to take off your pants. I didn't realize that. <laughs> Glad I went to college. That's all I have to say. In front of you, the twenty pound one. Wow. Okay. Now, Big slab of meat, Absolutely, then. yeah. <laughs> you won't believe how far it will go at night time. Meet the woman who's brought down from head office to train me in, this Ukrainian woman who goes around Ireland teaching people how to be the perfect abracadabra worker. I'm just basically there to help you. And she gave me the good news. I might be starting on 635, but if I stick around for a couple of months, I might go up to 650. <laughs> Got enough meat? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's yeah, you're broke, good, you're good. You're broken worry, open doesn't matter. When that 15 cents kicks in, boy, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. I think all the budgeting and all the penny pinching is just going to go out the window, and I'm just going to throw caution to the wind and just go to the supermarket and maybe not even bring any plastic bags whatsoever, you know, just go crazy altogether. I might even buy a bag for life and just feck it in the bin after one use. Just pull them down a little bit. Pull them down. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you don't want the sort of floral arrangement. <laughs> you won't be able to wear it for two weeks. You're dead right. I won't be going out. I don't drink either. So that, that'll save me a few quid. I don't trust people who don't drink. You don't trust people who don't drink. You should trust people who do, don't drink more. Nope, never. You never like Don't your, cry. You were never like a raging alcoholic. No, I wasn't like a raging alcoholic. I was a very subdued alcoholic. Sit in your own bedroom. Yeah, sit in my own bedroom. Drink and smoke. One day. One day will be as quick as that. You think it's a good idea to try to not eat chips every day, though? 
I don't know, it just depends on you, you know, like I'm in this industry for seven years and um, I eat cheese, well I would say I eat them every day, yeah. but I eat them a lot and I have no harm. You haven't like, put on weight or anything? I'm very healthy, yeah, and I don't put any weight and I wouldn't say I have any problems with my health, so I'm a completely healthy person and I'm very happy with my life, so. Mm. Ah, this is all, this is all frozen donut kebab meat, but I can't help but think how many lambs have been fucking killed. It's nice to be doing a bit of work, actually. I'd love to do stuff like this all day, packing shelves. You know, you can just do it. Think away to yourself. Turn the freezer back on. There it goes. I'm doing two kebabs, according to uh, Aoife here. I'd be nervous enough about doing one, but I'll, I'll, I'll see how I get on. OK, try to put it all over a kebab, OK? So it goes all over the meat. OK. It looks much, much tastier. And Good. There you go. Thanks very much. Come again. It's been the longest day in a long time of my life. It's boring. Some good stuff was, I, I, the people are dead interesting, you know? They, we're into similar things, you know? They're not a million miles away from myself at all. They're not even a mile away. They're, they're, I'm the same as these people. They're, 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 you know. Uh, there's, there's no, you know, I'm shocked at that. I actually, I have to say, that was a, almost a snobbery pretense of mine coming into it. The major issue of the day really is, uh, I have to buy pants tomorrow. I've only got 37 euro to my name, and I have to buy black pants, you know, which I've always found a weird thing about uniforms and, you know, like wearing the black pants, you know, like I, I feel like most customers that come into Abracababra really couldn't give a shit what kind of pants you have on. So uh, I feel a little resentful that, you know, probably nearly half of the money I have left to last me till Thursday week, yeah, goes on a pair of black pants. Cool, which one's the bar? Uh, this is Connell, the other flatmate. How you doing, I, only really? him, I only met him this morning. I know I'm not really struggling in the sense that I have another life, but in, you know, for that month I had no access to the money, as I was saying, and these students were always talking about how difficult it was when they came back on a Monday after being at home with their parents with like five steaks and all their baguettes and crap that their mother gave them to get through the week. Well, half nine, phone, no credit, student. And then they're going, oh, I have no money. And it's like, because they're spending it on booze the whole time. And then they're trying to, uh, you know, identify with my feelings. And I'm going, yeah, well, you know, I have tuna and pasta for the next week and a half until I get paid. So, feck off. Back to whatever bog hole you came from and get an education in this shithole. Engineers. Bullshit. <laughs> Cheers. An acquired taste. <laughs> Viva la Michael Gainis. Read it and cry praise. Michael Gainis never let you down. Celtic Tiger never hit Michael Gainis. They're still keeping it real for the real people. Anyway, back to work. This is Leo and Alicia. Alicia. What are your real names? My real name here. Uh, <laughs> Chang Liang Ye. Chang Liang Ye. Yeah, yeah. And what is your real name? Alia. Aliyah. Yeah, Aliyah. There's an interesting thing about the Chinese in Ireland is, uh, well, just say, for example, one of them was called Sean. <laughs> now, I can assure you, his mother didn't name him Sean. <laughs> and what happens is they arrive in Ireland and they go to their host family. And the host family says, yes, what is your name? And they go, hun ting ting la. And the Chinese family go, no, 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 no. Your name is Sean. <laughs> By the way, Leo's the boss. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How long you work in Africa, about? Uh, one, one and a half year. One and a half year. One year. One year? Mm -hmm. I'm a bit obsessed with Chinese culture myself, and I train in Kung Fu, and I ended up training them Kung Fu. <laughs> Me, the, the wide eye teaching the slanty how to do Kung Fu. It was so odd. <laughs> Good, right? Leg. Oh, the leg. Oh, yeah, that's Jackie Chan. Very simple. Oh, I'm not there. How do you do you want to love? Yes. That's the best bit. You teach me Wang Fei Hong song. I teach you Sub Chi Kao Du, the first form of Charlie Foot. In Cantonese, right? Yet. Yi. So, customers. <laughs> I'm <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it turns out the real pain of working a minimum wage job like I a Barber is you have to serve the drunken population of Ireland every night, day after day. <laughs> now, I don't want to make any judgments, so I'm just going to tell you, you have a massive problem with alcohol in this country. <laughs> oh, Ireland's landed the crack. The crack we had last night. Bobby went into Abercrombie and he puked all over the floor. The crack. <laughs> we were down in the club, and oh, it was mad. We were all really drunk. We said, we'll go down to Abercrombie. And Bobby went into Abercrombie and he pissed all over the chips. He was fucking mad, like. The crack. <laughs> Always funny. <laughs> Work was fine today. Be glad when Natalia's gone, you know, just get to know people. Talk to Tony today. Chinese people are great. I love I love the camaraderie. I love dealing with people, you know, dealing working with people. I love that. And uh, I don't hate the job. You know, I like going in and talking to the people and stuff. I'm getting a little better at it. It's not as big a deal. I went into work today, I wasn't even worried about it, you know, I just went in and worked. Same thing tomorrow. Uh, your experience in the first week of hard labor, what do you think of that? It can be tough when it gets busy with the drunken people. I find that a bit difficult. Yeah. But not difficult enough that, like, I wanted to pack it in or anything. And I'm sure you get used to it, you know? It gets easier. <laughs> it gets you easier. say that with a smirk. Yeah, yeah. I've experienced it so I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's your wages. Right. So it would be fair to say that somebody that's on the minimum wage is that badly off. Would you be fair to say that? Legally, it's the worst fucking money you can pay me. Thank you very much. Anything less would be illegal. Say, so it'd be fair to say somebody who's single who has no expenses. <laughs> exactly. Well, there you go. Now you can pay the rent. Check it. <laughs> it's not the best money. It's certainly not that comfortable. If you have no life, and you don't drink or smoke, which was a big point everyone in Ireland seemed to say to me, why did they send you down? You don't drink or smoke. Sure, what could you spend your money on? Like, as if there's nothing else. <laughs> why are we here today? It's, uh, we're gonna try to discover what products exist that for 635 or under or just over, in and around 635, that would sort of properly represent a reward for an hour's work in a job like Abracadabra. This is the men's interest section. <laughs> Let's see if uh, I can be rewarded by uh, what men are interested in. Oh, college girls, 8 10. Obviously, uh, priced for college graduates and not minimum wage workers. Uh, GQ, 538. Now, there you go. Look at the value you get for money. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. <laughs> 6 for 538. How come all the women's magazines are cheaper? You is just 1 euro, Irish Tatler, just 2 euro. <laughs> I've actually wanted to buy this. <laughs> Why the fries taste good? I don't think they have abracadabra in here. I was a huge fan of Robert Fisk. I feel like a very independent source to say that is a fucking joke. Okay? That's nearly a whole day's work for me. <laughs> After tax, man. Half of an hour's work for a Westlife single. That's fair enough. <laughs> I think I might buy the CD to use it to scrape the shit off the pots. How's your hold? <laughs> Three nose nine. <laughs> so yeah, there's stuff out there you can buy. That's a fact. My friend asked me when I finished, you know, he said, uh, did you meet any women when you're in Ivor Kebab? I said, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but uh, women don't find men who work in Ivor Kebab sexy, yeah? <laughs> women don't find men with the hat and the glasses and the sweat dripping down and the smell of kebabs and the sauce dripping all over the place. You know, they just don't find that attractive. The only time you'd be lucky enough to meet a woman in Waterford when you're working in Abercrombie is you're leaving work at five in the morning and you're walking up the road and some lonely girl who's really drunk who missed all the fast food places just smells the kebabs off you. <laughs> and sees the sauce and just goes, mmm, I want to eat him. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Step aside. Right here, please. 
Alright? You know what I hate about drunkenness? It's the uniformity of drunkenness. It makes everyone into the same person. Just loud and silly. You think you're totally mad, you know? But in reality, you're just. You just. Everyone becomes in unison one person. I'm talking about drunk drunk. I'm not talking about tipsy. Camera. That's a camera. It's a bigger one. He's got a bigger one than him. <laughs> the weird thing about Waterford is loads of guys come in with their, you know, their, their Bjors or whatever, their, their girls. And uh, Bjors, it's a cork slang. It's, I didn't call them boars. <laughs> they come in with their girls. And the weird thing about Waterford is guys think they impress their women when they order taco fries. Because in Waterford, taco fries is international cuisine. <laughs> so, oh, taco fries, please. <laughs> Extra chili sauce. <laughs> The songs are good, actually. <laughs> you know, you just kind of go, all right, it's bad, but... You know, there's, there's hope. It's not fair, is it? I've only got to do this for one month. This is my kitchen table, which has been like this for approximately three to four days. There's no bin bags. There's no bin bags, so it's just been like this. And the guys came home and nobody did a fucking thing. And I'm not doing anything because I've cleaned fucking more times than these guys have probably ever cleaned in a year since I've been here for two weeks. This is just the table. Now let's have a look at the dishes. Oh dear, John's dinner Thursday night. So why I'm showing you this horrible mess is because I woke up this morning, what was the clean living room, and I come back to this. Like fucking work. I can't tell you what that kitchen smells like, but it's fucking disgusting. You have no fucking life when you work nights. I went into the news agents today. What time is it? It's 20 past 3. Approximately 15 minutes ago, I said to the girls, good morning. They were laughing at me. I told them I worked nights. They understood. You can feel it between people who are making no money. They understand. And I only have to do this for one month. This program is for the people who have to fucking scrape every fucking day in that supermarket. I can see people. Tesco, every little bit helps. And I think, you know what? I fucking understand what that means now. Even though it's just an advertisement for Tesco, every little fucking bit helps. Taco chip and donut kebab, yeah? Thanks. Another satisfied customer. <laughs> yeah. I like it. I like it. You know what? I might be confident, but I'm bordering on cocky, and that's not good in the fast food industry. Natalia says, be confident, but not cocky. The last thing a customer wants is to think you're too cocky that you might spit in their food. I got this. Donut kebab, regular burger, chips, and a Coke. So I turn around to the Chinese and I say, Don't come out as regular burger, ha! And the people at the counter who order the chips and the Coke say, no, 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 I order the chips and the Coke as well. And I say, yeah, I know you order the chips and the Coke, but you don't understand the system, okay? <laughs> the Chinese are gonna look after that, I look after the chips and the Coke. So I try to explain about the system, but they don't take it in, and they've lost all faith in the system, and for the rest of the order, they just sit there like this. <laughs> Obsessed, obsessed, leering, watching, 
gawking at the process that goes on behind the counter that they don't know about, nor do they want to know about. That's why they're on this side of the counter, but still, they gawk and they leer and they watch the process that goes on behind the counter and they're drunk and they're elated and they're tired and they see things like some kind of weird acid trip that they don't really understand what's going on. Chinese people cutting the donut kebab meat with a big long knife like crouching tiger, hidden dragon. Slice, slice, and chips being put into oil. And burgers being flipped. And sauce being put onto burgers. And drunken people just love sauce and they're just looking at the sauce going, mmm, sauce. And chips being put into styrofoam casings and more donut kebab being stuffed into pita bread and sauce being put onto that and then the donut kebab swirling around slowly with the grease dripping in the light and the weird red light from the super sir thing that comes behind making the thing hot and the people are looking at the super sir going geez i remember when i had a super sir when i was a child we used to put toast on it and all of a sudden there's just this world of things coke being pushed out everything just happening around them and by the time their food comes they're lost in some circus of memories and they're thinking about the first time they ever made an order in a fast food place in their life and when you bring them food they go no I need more than food I need my childhood back <laughs> And when you deny someone their childhood, they get cross. It's not what I ordered. And of course, then the real complaints come. And being the only guy who speaks proper English in the place, me, has to deal with every bloody complaint. And he said, rah, 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 rah. And the Chinese are behind me going, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> oh, you speak English now, Yankee boy, ha, ha, ha. You comedian, funny, funny, ha ha. I will. I'm glad I went to college. Who's in college now? Ha ha. <laughs> it's funny, like, isn't it? Like, people always go, oh, I don't feel like doing the wash up in your flat. Like, look at this. <laughs> this is like unbelievable. I think it's safe to say this is not a walk in the park when you're washing this many dishes at half four in the morning. Leo. Yeah. Do you like this job? What's this one? In general. Okay. Nobody like. Nobody like. I'll tell you something I realized. If I, if I were to have any sort of realizations about my life, it's like, God, I have such an easy life compared to, you know, working in Abacababra. It's just like really unbelievably how good my life is. And I used to go to bed every night going, wow, I'm never going to complain about anything ever again, which lasted about a week. But anyway, <laughs> you know, I come from this bullshit Dublin 4 lifestyle, and I go to this minimum wage lifestyle in a regional town in Ireland, right? And it's just like, that's pretty real to me. So I come back to Dublin after it's all said and done, back to my Rings End Road, sort of nouveau riche, Dublin 4 lifestyle, and everyone's like, save this. What's it like to be back in reality? <laughs> and I'm thinking, bro, I just left reality, man. Dublin 4 is not reality. Dublin 4 is fantasy with the mochas and the paninis and all that crap. Let me tell you something about paninis, okay? <laughs> paninis are half the sandwich for twice the price. And when you're living on minimum wage, you don't eat paninis, okay? As a matter of fact, on minimum wage, you don't eat anything with the word nini in it because it just means small. <laughs> uh, uh. Chinese love gambling. <laughs> and uh, you know the coin toss game? You know, you, t you try to get the coin closest to the wall. 